If you're brand new to making YouTube videos and you're trying to figure out editing, you've come to the right place. Because in this complete YouTube editing for beginners guide, you're gonna learn absolutely everything from downloading the editor, organizing footage, the basics of video editing, and even some advanced strategies to keep your videos engaging. And because this is a very detailed guide, I will have chapters linked down below in case you know something and you wanna just skip ahead to the next thing. Let's dive in. So let's first start off with which video editor should you choose? Now there's a lot of options out there. You got Premiere Pro, you got Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, you've got Filmora and iMovie and all these other options. But if you're just starting out, you probably wanna start with something a little simpler just to learn the basics of editing and then eventually work your way up to some of the more complex paid software. And so with that in mind, if you're just getting started, my recommendation would be to get CapCut. It is a free editing software. There's also a paid option where you get some more features, but you can edit a free video with this on PC or Mac. You can just go to CapCut.com and there'll be a really big download button here. You can click that download it on your computer and be able to utilize this software. If you do decide to upgrade to the pro version and get all the effects they have, it's only $10 a month or $90 yearly. Uh, if you are interested in that, I do have an affiliate link for CapCut in the description. If you purchase through that, I do get paid a commission at no extra cost to you. But again, it's not really needed. This is your first YouTube video. You probably don't need to be on the pro version right now. And once it's all set up and you open CapCut, it should look like this when you boot it up. You should see a big create project button. And before we go and create our first project, let's actually talk about footage for a second. Now I do want to touch on briefly getting footage to your computer as there are some people I've seen out there who have been confused about that. So all you have to do is plug your camera or your phone into your computer. It should pop up in your files section as a device and then you should be able to click on that and transfer the footage over to one of your files. However, if you are looking for your specific camera or phone and how to transfer to a computer, there's plenty of YouTube videos on this uh, just because each model could look a little different than someone else's. Now, once you have your footage transferred over, what I like to do to organize things is I usually have it in my movies folder. Uh, keep in mind I'm in Mac, but even if you're on PC, you can still follow along with this. Uh, what I like to do is I click on all my footage. For this example, I only have one clip here. So for that, all I do is click this options and click new folder. We'll call this first YouTube video for now. You know, just title it something that you're going to remember and then just drag and drop your footage in. That way you have all your clips in one spot and you can easily reference it uh, in the future. If you want to go really far, you could also change the names of the files to help you kind of keep things organized. Uh, personally, I don't do that. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm more of a messy kind of person. So I'll just throw all the clips into one file. I just know everything's there and I'll just kind of click through everything and find whatever I need. And with that out of the way, let's hop back over to CapCut here and let's create a new project here. And once we click that, we're gonna be instantly taken into the editor. And let me just briefly show you what we got here. Uh, on this section here where it says import, this is where all our files are gonna go. So our videos, our photos, whatever we wanna add to our project, it's gonna pop up here. This is gonna be our preview screen where we can play and watch our video before we actually save it to our computer. You'll find some details and settings over in this section. And then down here is the timeline and this is where we'll actually be doing the editing. So this is where we'll be connecting clips and adding text and uh, tons of different things like that will all be there. Uh, another important thing, uh, even though there's a lot of buttons here, don't get overwhelmed. Like a lot of these you're probably not even going to click to begin with. So there's only a few you probably want to pay attention to. And one of those is this lovely back button here. So if you do make mistakes and accidentally mess something up, which I'm sure is going to happen, totally okay. Uh, you got a back button right here where you can easily undo uh, any mistake you make. So that's the one button you got to know. <laughs> if you can remember one button, the undo button is super important. All right, so let's add some footage. So all I gotta do is click on import here. That should open our files. I'm gonna go over to movies and I'm gonna sort this a little differently. I'm gonna do the list sort. There we go, first YouTube video. There's our clip, click import and poof, we have it added to our uh, section here. And all we have to do is just drag it with our mouse. So click, drag down, let go. And there we go, we have this in our timeline. Now you'll also notice this white line that has now appeared. This is called the playhead. And what it does, it tells us where in the edit we are. What, what part of the video are we at? So right now at the beginning of the video, and if we scroll with this, 
You see we're scrolling through the video all the way up until the end. So this lets you know where you're at in your video project. And if I did have more video clips, I could easily just grab those and also drag them right in. Just drop them one right after the other. So I can just keep dropping these in. Boom, boom, boom. Add all my video clips in. And then what I like to do is just a rough guess of how I'm going to lay things out. Uh, for me, I do talking head videos. So it's usually like one clip and then I'm usually adding other stuff in later. Uh, but if you are doing like a vlog or something like that, just try to find whatever that layout is or the, the organization of what videos you want to feature and just kind of roughly drop them. We can reorganize them later, but let's at least just get them in. Now, just some other quick tips before we actually get into editing. Uh, you can zoom by pinching on your mouse pad, or you can grab this thing over here and that'll zoom in so you can get really close to the footage or you can zoom out a, a, a broader look at your project. You can also rearrange clips by just grabbing them and dragging them over. So there we go, move that one. If I keep move this one all the way over here, drag, 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 drop it over here. So you can literally just move, drag, move stuff around to rearrange it and find a spot where you wanna put stuff. You can also delete videos by clicking on them and then just clicking the trash can or by clicking the delete key on your keyboard. So when you do that, it's instantly gonna move this video all the way down to the starting point. Also delete this one here as well. And one last thing we'll wanna do before we actually get into the editing part is we wanna make any adjustments we want to our video clip. So if you want to adjust things like the brightness or make it more colorful, which is saturation, or any of those types of things, you want to apply it now because what we'll do with editing is we're going to essentially take this one clip we made and we're going to cut it up into a bunch of little clips. And so we don't want to go through each tiny clip adjusting you know, the, the brightness on each clip. That'll be really tedious. So I like to click on the video clip and then on the far right side, this is where all our settings are. It's going to go over to adjustment and in here, I'll be able to do some basic adjustments. So if I scroll down, see here's saturation. So I can make it more colorful if I want, or I could unsaturate it and make it black and white. Um, I can also adjust the contrast, I can adjust the exposure if I want to brighten the image up or darken it. Um, I have all control of that. I can increase the shadows. I want the shadows to be brighter or darker. You have all this control here and you don't have to know everything. You can just kind of mess with them, see what you like. Uh, maybe you want to do this. Oh, I like how that looks, you know, and just leave it like that. You can just mess around with these knobs, uh, but you want to make all those adjustments now before we actually start editing. And all right, let's get into editing. I'm just going to zoom in here on the timeline. And the way I like to edit is I like to look for the audio bumps on the bottom. So we have our clip here and you'll notice those lines there at the bottom. Those are audio bumps. That's where I am talking so if I scroll ahead to that part you'll see that it's completely silent here and then poof we've got bumps going up that's our sign that oh I just started talking there so I know probably roughly where I need to start editing but I know I make a mistake right away here too so I can easily scroll ahead here all the way up to the part where I'm about to start talking there I am <laughs> with my mouth open ready to start talking and let's actually make our video start right when we say our first line here. So there's two different ways to do this. The first is you can click on the video and you can actually drag from the edge of the clip here. You'll notice that the, the mouse turns to this icon. I can hold down my mouse and literally drag this all the way up to the point where I start talking. That's one way to do it. And you can grab either sides of your clip and there we go, It put it right there. But another way that I think is more specific and will be more helpful in the future is doing the split and delete method. I like to go right up to the part where I'm about to start talking. And I'll also use the directional pad. So the little arrows on the keyboard, you can go frame by frame to the point where you're about to start talking. And then what I like to do is click the split button which is this. You'll also notice there is a command under it. I'm on Mac, so it's command B. But if you're on PC, it's probably like control B, if I'm not mistaken. You'll want to try and learn those, those keyboard shortcuts so it's a little easier. So if I click command B on my keyboard, it'll cut clip in half like this. So this is now its own clip, and this beginning part is now its own clip. Since we don't want this beginning, I can just click delete, and it removes it. But where this is also helpful is using that split button helps you edit things in the middle of your video. So for example, I talk here for a little bit and say my sentence, and then I have this huge blank spot where I'm thinking about what I'm gonna say next, and then I start talking again. So I obviously don't want this giant gap where I'm thinking, and that's where the split button is really helpful. I can get to right where I stop talking, and I might actually just play this uh, just to 
get it right here. So let's actually uh, click play here. I've grown my own YouTube channel to well over 100,000 subscribers. In this video, I wanna share three books that you should read to help you do the same. Pause, and then I'm gonna do the split button again. And again, that's Command B on my keyboard. Command B, we just split it. And then I can scroll ahead to the part where I start talking again. And I can do the directional keys. There we go, I'm about to talk. Command B again. We just did another split and look, by splitting right when we stopped talking and then splitting again right when we started talking, we've now separated this middle part where there's nothing going on. And we can literally just click delete and now we've combined two sentences together. So by using that split button, you can actually, you know, cut out the parts where you're being quiet, parts you don't want in the middle of a clip and then connect the parts that you do want together, which is really nice. So now we have this sentence connected. I get to the end, I can click Command B again, scroll to the spot part where I start talking, Command B, delete, the middle and poof now we have three sentences connected and we can just go through our entire video just connecting all those parts together and so what i'm going to do i'm going to just speed ahead here uh, i'm just going to go through this whole entire clip i took cutting out the silences leaving the parts i want and i do make a few mistakes in this video where i mess up my lines you can just delete those get to the next part where you start talking do the split button there again and eventually you'll be able to connect all those sentences so let's skip ahead to where this is fully edited all right, I'm back and I've gone through, I've connected all my clips together and cut out all the silent parts. And now what I like to do is review my video. So I'm actually gonna click play and I wanna watch it through, make sure all the sentences connect well together. And I actually found a part where I didn't actually edit it the best way. So let me actually show you that real quick. I'm talking about YouTube books uh, I recommend. I'll probably play this full video at the end for you, but take a listen to this part. And I want you to pay attention to when the playhead gets between these two clips. This book goes very in depth into the strategy behind YouTube, and you'll definitely want to check it out. And the third book. Notice how there was a pause there for a little bit. So I'm just gonna zoom in, take a look here. And if I look, yeah, there's a whole spot here there's no audio. So I'm just gonna drag that. I'm gonna click on this clip and I'm gonna drag this over. And now let's click play on this and see if this next a bit better. Into the strategy behind YouTube and you'll definitely want to check it out. And the third book I would recommend there we go. Now there wasn't that like slight pause. So, you know, there was a great reason I needed to review my own footage. So definitely watch it through. And then also what you want to look for, is there anything in my video that doesn't need to be there? And this might be difficult because we think, ah, I want to throw everything in there. But for the sake of making an engaging video, I know for me, I sometimes rant for way too long on something. And so it's like, Colin, you know, you already got this down the first two sentences. We didn't need those extra two sentences where you're just repeating yourself over and over again. So I like to do that in my review process as well. Make sure that get into the point and that there's also not any like mistakes left in. And now that we're done with that, we have the basics of editing out of the way. Now we can get into actually making this look nice, adding some effects and different things like that to really make this an engaging YouTube video. And one of the first things I like to add is music. And let's actually have a conversation about music and the different video editors out there. Now, if you go into CapCut here and you go over to audio. Uh, you'll notice they have music built into here and you can easily drag and drop this in and be able to use it. The problem comes in is that CapCut is made by ByteDance, which is the owners of TikTok. And a lot of this music is designed for TikTok and not necessarily for YouTube. So a lot of the music mixed in here is actually copyrighted content. But if you use it on YouTube, you could get into trouble. You can face issues with monetization. There's a lot of problems with using copyrighted music. So I don't recommend using any of this stuff. Uh, I would just avoid it completely. The way I get around this is I use restriction-free music from Epidemic Sound, which is the sponsor of this video. Epidemic Sound gives you world-class music and sound effects that help you set the mood and feel for your videos. With over 40,000 music tracks and over 90,000 sound effects, you're sure to find the right track for your project. And let me actually show you that process of how I find the song, how I download it, and how I add it into CapCut. So first, you go to epidemicsound.com, click on music, and instantly you'll be shown a whole bunch of genres you can choose from, and as well, a whole bunch of moods if you already know the kind of feeling you're trying to create with your video. Now, for the video I'm currently making, I'm just sharing books that I recommend YouTubers read. So I'm just looking for something that's like a background beat. I'm gonna click on hip hop as a genre, and then I can sort this music even further by moods, by more specific genres in hip hop, like if I want uh, old school hip hop or lo-fi or different things like that. I can also decide the duration, the beats per minute, whether I want their vocals or no, or just the instrumentals. There's a whole bunch of things I can choose from. So for this, I'm gonna go laid back because 
you know, it's talking about books. Like, it can be a laid-back beat. And I could sort it further. I'm thinking I probably want a lo-fi beat, but I am kind of open to other stuff, so I won't select that yet. And let's just take a listen to some of these songs here. And you know what? I really like this good energy one. So I'm going to go ahead and just click download here. Uh, I can download the full mix or I can also download the stems. So if maybe I just want the drums, instruments, the bass, maybe I don't want the melody. You can actually just download different parts of a track and add them in. So that's a really cool feature. But I'm just going to do the full mix here. Click download. There we go. That saved that to my files. And then back inside of CapCut, uh, all I got to do is go to import again and I'm going to go to my device, click import. Here it is in my download. It's going to click import. Here's the audio. I can drag and drop this in. Perfect. And then also I want to adjust the volume. I don't want it to be full blast. That's going to annoy people. So do like maybe like negative 30. Let's actually take a listen. I've grown my own YouTube channel to well over 100,000 subscribers. And in this video, I want to share three books that you should read to help you do this. It kind of takes a little bit to get to the beat part. So let me actually trim this up to here. Then let's drag this back. Now let's take a listen. And as I'm playing it, I'm going to adjust the volume a bit to kind of figure out that right spot where it's background music, but it, you know, it's still hearable. I've grown my own YouTube channel to well over 100,000 subscribers. And in this video, I want to share three books that you should read to help you do the same. Now, the first book, which I have to mention, is the YouTube shortcut by myself, which is 99 cents on Amazon or free if you have Kindle Unlimited. And it literally teaches you these seven strategies I use to gain over 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. I, mean, I think that sounds great. And then something I'll also want to do is actually click the like button. And then I'm also going to click add to playlist. And you can actually create playlists in here. So you can have all the songs you'd like to use saved in one spot, easily access them later. Uh, I've got YouTube background music as a playlist. So I'm going to save that there so that way I can use it later. Now, because you're watching this video, Epidemic Sound is offering a limited time deal where you'll get a seven day free trial and then 50% off your first two months. So start soundtracking your content with my link in the description and use code Colin50 to claim this limited time deal. And with music set up, let's get into adding text to our project. So I want to add some text in the beginning. So let's actually listen to this intro and find a good spot to add some text. I've grown my own YouTube channel to well over 100,000 subscribers. And in this video, I want to share three books that you should read to help you do the same. So I'm thinking maybe three books to help you grow on YouTube might be good. So let's click on text. Let's click add text here and we'll just click default. And here we can type in our text on the far right side. So let's do free books to help you grow on YouTube like that. Cool. And then let's also make sure it's centered. Awesome. And then let's adjust the size. I can literally grab with my mouse to drag it. I'm going to grab a corner here to shrink it. You want to probably center this right here. Awesome. Uh, and then I want to change the font. I like to pick something really bold, like Arial Bold is really nice. I like how that looks. Um, and then we're going to scroll down a bit. You also want to add something behind your text, like shadow. Uh, so I think if I scroll down far enough, here we go, shadow. I can click on this box, add some black shadow. That really stands out and looks great. Um, maybe a little bit more blurriness. I think that looks great. Uh, and then also what we want to do is add some animation to our text. So if we go up to animation here and click on this, we can actually have it come on screen in a cool way and also leave the screen in a cool way. I can easily hover over these transitions. And here you'll see the pro transitions. You'll need a pro account in order to use those ones. Again, if you want to use the pro account, We'll have the affiliate link down below in the description uh, if you want to purchase that. Otherwise, you know, just stick with the free ones. Again, this is our first YouTube video. We don't have to go all out crazy. Like, let's just get the skills down here. Let's try this zoom in effect. Let's click on that. And then here we'll have the duration. So if we adjust this and then it'll give us a preview here. That you should. I think that's a good speed. And then I can zoom in over here and I can also adjust the positioning of this. I want to share three books. We want that to appear sooner, so I'm just going to drag this over. This video, I want to share. Nope, a little bit more over. Video, I want to share three books that you should read oh. to help you do the same. Now, the first book, which I. And then we'll do a fade out. So we'll go to out animation. We'll just find fade out. Click on that. Awesome. And now if we click play, this is what it's going to look like. I've grown my own YouTube channel to well over 100,000 subscribers. And in this video, I want to share three books that you should read to help you do the same. 
Now the first book, which I have to mention is the- Awesome. Now potentially you wanna have the captions going on your screen. There is auto captions built in, uh, but as you can see right now, there's only two uses left for captions and then they want you to go for the, the paid version of CapCut, which you can do. Uh, however, if you are gonna go to captions route, I do recommend using Opus Clip instead, as this will not only allow you to add really awesome captions that some of the top creators use, but you can also post your YouTube link into Opus Clip and it'll make viral short clips from your long form content. So you don't even have to worry about editing the short form content per se, it'll automatically make it for you. That's my personal go-to. So if you're really after the captions and creating good short form content, I recommend going that route versus just paying for cap cut and using the captions that they have there. I'll have a link to Opus Clip in the description if you wanna learn more. Now for the next part of this edit, I do wanna grab an image from Google and add it to my project because I actually talk about my 99 cent ebook, the YouTube shortcut. So if I'm gonna do that, I need to go to Chrome and add that. But this also brings up the question, can you just grab stuff from Google and add it to your video project? Is that considered like taking copyright stuff or you can be hunted and sued? And let me answer this in two different ways. The first way is the legal way, which is that you have to only use things that you have the rights to use. That's the way it's supposed to be. If you don't have the rights to use it, you can face action for, for taking someone's copyrighted stuff. Now let me answer this the second way, which is that I've been doing YouTube for a decade. And I have never had anyone come after me because I took an image from Google and added it to my YouTube video. Uh, it's never happened. Um, so it's a use of your own risk kind of thing. I think most people on YouTube just grab from Google images and things like that. But if you really, really, really wanna cover your videos and never risk them being taken down, only use what you have the rights to use. So I'm just gonna search for YouTube, shortcut, Amazon, and I'm gonna go to images. I'm sure that'll pop up, there we go. Here's the image of my book. Um, I'm actually gonna click on this one. I'm gonna click save image like that. Downloads, that'll save it right to my downloads. And then inside of CapCut, I can go back to my import and I can import this in. There we go, there's that JPEG, import, there's the image. And then I can just drag and drop this. And what we're actually gonna do we have our main clip here, which oftentimes is called our A clip. It's the main footage that's gonna be on screen. Um, and what we actually wanna do is add this as an overlay that sits on top of our video clip. And so to do that, we just have to stack it on top, just like the text here is above the video. This, we want to drag right on top and let go. And there we go, it's on top of our video. And I can use this to resize it, move that over to the side as I reference it. And let's get the positioning right here by clicking play. First book, which I have to mention, is the YouTube shortcut. By is the YouTube shortcut. The YouTube there we go. So probably right there we want it to pop up on screen. Shortcut by myself, which is is 99 cents on Amazon or free if you have Kindle Unlimited. And it literally teaches you these. All right, then probably around here we want it to fade out. What I actually wanna do, when this appears on screen, I want there to be a pop sound effect as I'm referencing it. So what I'm actually gonna do, uh, already in my files, I have a pop sound effect, like a mouth pop that I got from Epidemic Sound. So I'm actually gonna go to my files and get that. So in my music, I'm just gonna search pop and pull this up. There we go, mouth pop one. Gonna just drag, let's move this over to the side. Drag and drop that right into the area here. And then I'm gonna scroll down underneath and add this as a layer underneath my video. So I'll zoom in, make sure the mouth pop lines up. And then the other thing with sound effects too, is you wanna make sure that the sound effects aren't full volume as well, cause that's super annoying. So I'm gonna do like a negative, let's do negative 13-ish for the volume. Let's see how loud that is. Is the YouTube short? Awesome, and then I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna click animation. I'm gonna click out. I'm gonna do a strategies fade out so it fades off screen. Uh, and I'll make that like a second duration. Seven strategies. Awesome. And literally that'll work for any Google image. If you wanna grab something off of Google, add an image in, you'll be able to just drag and drop that right into CapCut. Next, let's talk about jump cut zoom ins. And this is a tactic a lot of YouTubers use to cause engagement. And so basically how it works is you have someone talking on camera like this and then poof, it cuts in. It's like zoomed in a bit more and the person's still talking and it's like kind of like a different camera angle. And then it comes back to zoomed out like this and you have that little bit of engagement even though this is just one stale talking head video. And the way you can do this, and I actually wanna do it for this clip right here. Uh, so I just gotta click on this clip 
And there's two different ways I could do this. I could either do the scale on the side here and I can increase and zoom in. Um, otherwise, I can literally just grab the clip here with my mouse, grab a corner, increase the size and line it up however I want. I can just kind of drag it. And so normally when you do that, you want to keep your eyes in the same spot. So I'm gonna zoom in. You want to try and keep your eyes lined up right when they zoom in. So that's about the same spot. So that looks a little bit more natural. And let's actually see this in play here just so you can experience what that's like. The seven strategies I use to gain over 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. It's only like 30 pages, but it really gets to the point of here are the exact things you need to do in order to grow a successful channel. The second book I would recommend. See, and just adding that little bit in there of that makes the video more engaging. It doesn't have to be as dramatic of a zoom in. It could just be a little bit. It could be dramatic if you want it to be, but just adding that in, it's just a new angle, something that is stimulating to the brain and to the eyes. So I would sprinkle those through. Don't go crazy with them because you don't want to be jerking the camera back and forth. That's going to bother people. But I would sprinkle them in every now and again just to keep the video more engaging. Now, the next tactic is actually doing a slow zoom in or a slow zoom out using something called keyframes. And the easiest way to explain this is it allows you to make changes to something from point A to point B, and it kind of allows you to animate things almost. So let me show you this in action and that will probably help it make more sense. So let's say we have a fire emoji here and we want it to move across the screen over here. What we could do is place keyframes to allow it to move. So basically with the fire selected, I just have to scroll down to the position button here and I can click on this diamond and it says add keyframe. And so if I click on this, I'll click on this one too. It'll place a keyframe that basically tells the editor at this point at zero seconds, the fire has to be in this location. And then if we scroll ahead and let's actually move it to here on the other side, it'll actually automatically place a keyframe for us because we moved it. And you can actually see in the timeline here, if you look carefully, I'll zoom in, you can see the little diamond pieces there. Uh, it automatically placed the keyframe. And what we've just told the editor is that three seconds, 0.28, the fire has to be on this side of the screen. So because we have one keyframe at the beginning saying fire has to be on the left and we have a keyframe three seconds in saying the fire has to be on the far right side, it actually causes the fire to move. So as you can see, this fire is now moving across the screen. So if we click play. I've grown my own YouTube channel to well over 100,000 subscribers. And in this video, you see we've kind of animated it just by placing the keyframe points. Now, obviously you probably won't have fire going across the screen, but where it's more practical is by doing zoom ins and zoom outs. So what I can actually do is at the beginning of this clip, I'm gonna click on the video. I'm gonna click the keyframe for scale and position just all these. And then I'm gonna scroll to the end of this clip and I'm going to increase the scale and move the position a bit. Ooh, too much, there we go. And because now we have a keyframe at the beginning, fully zoomed out, and a keyframe at the end of this clip where it's zoomed in 125% and the position has changed, we now have a zoom in that takes place. So when we click play, this is what our clip's gonna look like. I've grown my own YouTube channel to well over 100,000 subscribers. And in this video, I wanna share three books that you should read to help you do the same. See how much more engaging that is? Cause there's just that movement happening in the beginning. I almost always have a zoom in at the beginning of my videos. Heck, there's probably one at the beginning of this video uh, because it's just so engaging. So instead of just having Here's a talking head video, yada, yada, nothing's changing with the camera. Turn on those keyframes, have a slow zoom in happen. It just makes the video way more exciting. And the opposite works too. You could have a zoom out happen and it just starts slowly zooming out. All you gotta do is place those keyframes down. And also for speed wise, the closer the keyframes are together, the faster the adjustment. The further they are apart, the slower the adjustment. The main reason why is because that's seconds. You know, if we put it 20 seconds in, we want it this far zoomed in, it's gonna take a while to reach that, that destination. Versus, you know, if our keyframe, if we want to, let's actually delete this keyframe, knock those out. Let's make a dramatic zoom in. So we have keyframes still at the beginning. Let's go like one second in. I want this to be at 200, 366 percent on my face watch what's going to happen here when we click play on this i've grown my own youtube channel to well see how it zooms in super super fast because the keyframes are, are super close close together um we can just back out of that um there we go 
<laughs> return back to order. Um, so utilize those zoom ins. It's a really easy way to make engaging videos. And also just take some time to mess around with keyframes. They'll be super useful in the future as you get into some of the more advanced editors. Now let's talk about adding B roll to your videos. And you're probably asking yourself, what is B roll? Well, if you remember from earlier, we talked about the main area here, the main clips being called A roll. Well, B roll is more of like a technical film term, but essentially it means when you have other clips that are being shown on screen that are not the, the main clip, like the main person talking. So if you think about an interview, someone's being interviewed and sometimes the, the video will start showing clips of different things, but we still hear the audio in the background. That's them showing B-roll or stock footage or just different clips they gathered um, throughout the day. And you'll see B-roll a lot in like uh, like product reviews, like an iPhone, like someone's talking about the iPhone. Oh, I just got this iPhone, we're reviewing it. And then as they're talking about it, we'll see clips of the iPhone and them filming it and showing the cameras and different things like that. That is considered B-roll. And the reason you wanna add that to your projects is we're on YouTube, we're making videos. Uh, and it's a visual platform. So as you reference things, as you talk about things, it's important to show people, not just tell them, show them the different things. And that makes videos way more engaging. And we can actually even utilize this in our book review. So take a listen to this section. The second book I would recommend picking up is The YouTube Formula by Daryl Eves. And this again is a YouTube strategy book. A lot of people think that becoming a YouTuber is really all about the video editing and things like that, but really it's about the strategy behind the content that you're putting out. So what I actually wanna do is as I reference the video editing part, I want stock footage to appear because I could easily reference that and have it as another element in my video to make it more engaging. So what we can do is we are gonna go to the website pexels.com and this is actually free stock footage and free stock photos. So let's sort this by videos and let's search video editing and we'll actually get a whole bunch of different clips that we could utilize in our video uh, and download and add to our CapCut project to make it more engaging. So here we have this person editing, I like this. So let's actually click download here, download it right onto our computer. Again, we're gonna go back to import here. We're gonna add that footage in. There we go. And then let's find that spot where I talk about video editing. Becoming a YouTuber is really all about the think that becoming a YouTuber is really all about the all about the video editing. And then we can show this clip of the video editing on screen. Let's actually increase the size a bit. There we go. Let's see how this lines up. YouTube strategy book. A lot of people think that becoming a YouTuber is really all about the video editing and things like that, but really it's about the strategy behind the content that you're putting out. And then let's do a command B to split this and then delete this part out. So now we have this nice little clip here to just help make this more engaging. And this again is a YouTube strategy book. A lot of people think that becoming a YouTuber is really all about the video editing and things like that, but really it's about the strategy behind the content that you're putting out. And this book goes very in depth into the strategy behind YouTube and you'll definitely want to check it out. And and that's great. And if you can find ways where you're saying different things and you're like, huh, I wonder if there's stock footage where I can do that. Like maybe I'm talking about people being disappointed and I could literally go to Pexels and maybe search like disappointed, if I spelt that rightly. <laughs> no, I didn't. Here we go, disappoint. So we have this video potentially of this person feeling disappointed. Here we go, like, look, she's disappointed. We could easily add that in as we're talking about people feeling disappointed. So try to find those areas where you can add that in because that's ultimately gonna make your video more engaging because we have lots of visual elements. We have potential pictures popping up on screen, music's playing in the background, we've got text, we've got other video elements we can add. And the other part about B-roll too is you can film yourself or you can film just some of the B-roll yourself as you're talking about it. So maybe you're talking about frustration Maybe you can film yourself being frustrated. Uh, making your own kind of B-roll with you in it uh, can be also a really interesting way to make something more engaging. And now after all of that, we have a pretty complete video here. So because this is the end, let's actually just play through the whole video so you can see it all put together. I've grown my own YouTube channel to well over 100,000 subscribers. And in this video, I wanna share three books that you should read to help you do the same.
Now the first book which I have to mention is the YouTube shortcut by myself, which is 99 cents on Amazon or free if you have Kindle Unlimited. And it literally teaches you these seven strategies I use to gain over 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. It's only like 30 pages, but it really gets to the point of here are the exact things you need to do in order to grow a successful channel. The second book I would recommend picking up is the YouTube Formula by Daryl Eves. And this again is a YouTube strategy book. A lot of people think that becoming a YouTuber is really all about the video editing and things like that, but really it's about the strategy behind the content that you're putting out. And this book goes very in depth into the strategy behind YouTube and you'll definitely want to check it out. And the third book I would recommend is Tested Advertising Methods by John Caples. And this is a really great book about writing titles and headlines that'll be really important for YouTube. So a lot of great principles in here that's gonna help you craft better titles to persuade people to click on your videos and definitely check out all three of these books. Awesome, and now let's actually cover some final steps here. Uh, to save this, you're just gonna click the export button and you're just gonna save it to your computer here and you can export it out. If possible, you wanna do 1080p at least for when exporting this out. That'll give you at least decent enough quality for YouTube. Uh, save that to your computer and then you just have to open up youtube.com and you can upload it directly from there. You'll also wanna create a thumbnail and we'll actually have a thumbnail training we're gonna release here on YouTube if that's out. It'll be linked in the description or somewhere here in the info card. And also, we're releasing thumbnail templates that are pre-designed, that are professionally done. If you're interested in checking that out, I'll also have a link to that down below. As if you're brand new to YouTube, you're already learning so many skills. So it's just one step out of the equation. We make professional templates that'll get viewers to click. We'll also train you how to utilize the templates to persuade viewers to click as well. Again, I'll leave more information on that down below. If you want to go deeper into editing, I will leave a playlist here of some CapCut video editing tips and tricks, just covering some more advanced strategies that you'll be able to learn uh, with CapCut. And I'll also leave my free YouTube course up here as well. If you are trying to learn YouTube and master that, I did a free two-hour YouTube course. So check out either one of those.